All right, so let us consider the identity matrix, which we denote by I. So if you ask, well, what are the entries of this matrix? Well, if we take the entry in the i row jth column, there are only two possible entries for i. The entry is either 1, if the row index equals the column index, and the entry is 0, if the row index is different than the column index. So if you think of this visually, when i equals j, the row and the column index indices are equal, and so you're on the main diagonal of the matrix i. If i and j are different, you're off the main diagonal, and all the entries are 0. Now, i could be of any size. So what if i were a 2 by 2? Well, on the main diagonal, the entries are 1. Off the main diagonal, everywhere else, the entries are 0. If i were a 3 by 3 matrix, on the main diagonal, all the entries are 1. Off the main diagonal, all the other entries are equal to 0. And the same would go for 4x4, 5x5, and so on. What we want to prove now is that this matrix behaves like the real number 1. So if you think of real numbers, you're saying, well, the real number 1 has the following property. If you multiply a times 1, or 1 times a, the result is a. We want to prove that i has the same property. So if a is a square matrix, and you compute a times i, where implicitly i is of the same size as a, you get the same as if you would do i times a, and you get back the original matrix. So let's prove this. We'll prove that a times i is equal to a, and you can prove afterwards on your own that i times a equals a. So, well, how do we prove that matrices are equal? Well, very simply, if they have the same corresponding entries. So consider any entry of AI. Well, we want the entry in the ith row, jth column of AI. This is the ith row of A times the jth column of I. We multiply corresponding entries, and we add them up. So we're summing over all possible values of k. So the only question is, well, what's this going to be like? i, k, j. Well, the matrix i is very simple. Only if the row index equals the column index do you have a 1, otherwise you have a 0. So the idea is, well, let's split the sum up into two parts. Let's sum over all values of k, and keep in mind, i and j are fixed, right? So j is fixed, so k will range over all possible values, and sometimes it will be equal to k. Not k, but j. So sum over all values of k except when k is j, so you get a i k i k j. But now we are omitting a single term, right? We're summing over all possible values of k other than the one time when k is j. So we add that leftover term when k is j. So the term is a i j times i j j. And now we're basically done. Because if we're summing over all possible values of k that are different from j, then k and j are different. If the row index is different than the column index, we're off the main diagonal, and the entry is always 0. And if the row index equals the column index, we are on the main diagonal, and the entry is 1. So what do we have here? Well. No matter what the entry of A in the i row k column A is, we're multiplying it by 0. So we're just summing a bunch of zeros. The result is 0, 
And so we're left with the entry in A in the i-th row j-th column. So we have just proved that the entry of a i in the i-th row j-th column is the same as the entry of a in the i-th row j-th column. So our matrices a i and a have the same corresponding entries, therefore they are equal as matrices.